In this video, I'm going to show you how to access and configure some encoding settings and what those encoding settings mean using an IP camera. These settings can also be accessed using a NVR web interface, the NVR with a mouse and monitor, or even from an XVR with coaxial cameras. First, I'm going to log into the web interface for my camera. It's using the default IP address on our local network. If you're unsure how to find your camera on a network, we do have other guides to show you how to log in and use an IP camera on a network. I've gone ahead and logged into the admin user using the default username and password. To get to the encoding settings, I first need to click the setting tab at the top right hand side of the web interface and then go to the video tab under the camera main tab. Here are the video encoding settings and then there is a second page called the audio encoding settings. First, we're going to go over the video encoding settings. So again, I'm clicking back on the video tab underneath the camera menu option. The first is the encode mode. On this camera, there are four encode modes listed. H.264, H.264B, H.264H, and H.265. There are very few differences between the H.264 protocols in which case the B and H are more modern H.264 generations that try to squeeze more video data into a smaller package. I'll explain what that video data and package means in a few moments. However, H.265 is the latest generation of encoding on our IP cameras. It provides much better video compression, which again I'll explain here in a few moments, <clears throat> to better create video files that are more compressed and take less hard drive space on your NVR's hard drive, XVR's hard drive, or an SD card if you have one installed inside of your IP camera. The next thing is the smart codec. You can either have this on or off, however we recommend keeping it off if you intend to use IVS or smart detection features offered on your camera. This camera does offer smart detection features, so I'm going to leave the smart codec option off. The next is the resolution of the image. As you can see here, we have 5 megapixel resolution. It's like a little above 4 megapixel resolution. We have the 2K 4 megapixel resolution, 3 megapixel resolution, 2 megapixel, which is also known as 1080p. Then we have somewhere between 720p, which is standard HD, and then we have the standard HD 720p. And then on some of our cameras, they also offer 4K 8 megapixels, which is 3840 by 2160, or thereabouts, depending on the camera. Then there is the frame rate. Now this is the amount of frames per second. So just keep in mind that the frame rate is the number of pictures per second that are being created for the video file or video stream. Next is the bitrate type. There is CBR, which stands for constant bitrate, or VBR, which stands for variable bitrate. Essentially, the difference between these is CBR allows you to set a specific bitrate target that you would like the camera to stay at or under in order for you to specify what quote unquote container you would like your video data to be in. Varial bitrate takes a much more lax approach and says I can go above the bitrate required for my video or I can go below it depending on the conditions. So a CBR or constant bitrate is the recommended setting for the bitrate type. So I'm going to leave it as CBR. Here is a reference bitrate that is created by the camera and tells you where you should probably keep your constant bitrate in between. For example, it gives us some pre-selected values of a 4 megabit or 4096 kilobit per second bitrate. This is essentially the package that I've been talking about, which I will explain here again in just a moment. There is a 6000 bitrate, an 8000 bitrate, or you could even set a customized bitrate. Again, wanting to stay in between this reference bitrate that is listed here. So the lowest package or amount of data I could tell my camera to create per second would be 3,000 and that directly relates to how much video storage you will need to store video for whatever given amount of time. Let's say you wanted to store it for a week and you weren't getting quite a week yet, then you would want to lower your reference bitrate, lower your bitrate to try to decrease the amount of data that this camera is going to try and use. So for example, this would try to pack a 
5 megapixel resolution image at 30 frames per second into a small container being 3 megabytes per second. To a layman, this is not going to really mean a whole lot. However, you will want to know that lowering your bitrate will increase your recording time. In order to do that, you need to lower, also lower your resolution and lower your frame rate to achieve that lower bitrate. So as you can see, I'm going to go back and, and select the, one of the preset options of 4 megabit per second. Let's see what happens if I lower this camera's image quality down to 1080p HD and then lower its frame rate down to 15 frames per second. We're going to see a much lower reference bit rate that the camera tells us it can use. You see it went down from a 3000 bit rate for the reference rate down to 1000. And then for the customized bit rate, it went from a 4000 bit rate down to around a 2500 bit rate. You can see the other bit rates listed here that it would suggest us use. Again, 1024, ranging all the way up to 6000. So I know that was a lot of information. I'm just going to go over it very briefly again to give an overview. We have the encode mode. Keep in mind H.265 would allow you to do even smaller packages, an even smaller bit rate. However, for this example, I'm going to leave it on H.264. Smart codec, again, will try to help assist with that bit rate, but we'll leave it disabled because we want to use our IVS, our smart detection rules. The resolution is going to be the size or quality of the image. Again, this camera has resolutions ranging from 5 megapixel all the way down to the old standard HD 720p and I set it to 1080p for our example of a lower quality image. Frame rate is the number of pictures in per second in your video. This is going to affect how smooth your video is. Bitrate type, again we suggested you use a constant bitrate. The reference bitrate is created by the camera to tell you a guideline of what bit rates you should use for the camera. The bit rate selection, again, should give you some suggestions, again, to which bit rates you can use. The lower the number, the more video data you can store on your hard drive. At the bottom, below our bit rate, we have the iframe interval, or keyframe interval, if you are familiar with encoding. This is a more advanced setting. This particular camera has an iframe interval ranging from 15 to 150. Now there is a mainstream and substream. Essentially the mainstream is the large resolution that is used when you record the camera to your NVR, to the SD card, if you're streaming it over the web with a web browser using the PC software. And then last but not least, there is the substream. The substream is primarily used for remote viewing using the cell phone app. Or it also, can also be used in various different recording methods where you record the substream continuously while you only record the mainstream on motion or with your smart detection rules, etc. So mainly the substream is one of those more advanced things, again mainly used for remote viewing over the internet or if you want to use an advanced recording schedule. Hopefully that gave you a good decent overview of the video encoding settings. Now I'm going to move on to the audio encoding settings and they're a little more simpler. Again if you're not familiar with audio tech then the sampling frequency, you can play around with it. It's not going to mean a whole lot to you, but you will usually get higher quality audio with a higher sampling frequency. So again, we have the mainstream and substream audio streams. This does correlate to the video stream. For example, you can either disable or enable the audio stream as it's overlaid on top of your mainstream video stream. So if I wanted to record audio while I'm recording my camera, I'm going to, of course, want to leave this setting enabled. And then I can also enable it on my substream if I wanted my substream to record audio as well. The encode mode, there are up to six different encode protocols on this particular camera. The one that we've had the most luck with in our testing is AAC. Like I mentioned before, the sampling frequency, if you're not an audio technician, it's not going to mean a whole lot to you. Either a 48,000 or 64,000 sampling frequency is going to give you the best audio quality. If you are an audio technician, then you will know what sampling frequency will work better for your scenario. Like I mentioned, 48,000 or 64,000, we've had the best luck with. I'm going to set this one to a 48,000 sampling frequency. Substream, again, we can choose our encode mode. AAC, 48,000. It's going to give us some of the best quality. You can also do 64,000 if that works for you. Down at the bottom, we have the audio in type. This is going to be the microphone that the camera uses. For example, this camera has a line in, which is your external microphone input, or 
the built-in microphone. Again, line in stands for the microphone input on the pigtail of your camera, or the mic is actually the built-in audio microphone for the camera. There is a noise filter option. You can either enable or disable the noise filter. Again, this is going to be a trial and error setting. There's no one guaranteed setting that's better for what you're trying to capture. Down at the bottom, you can do microphone volume or speaker volume. Microphone volume is for the audio input coming into the camera. Speaker volume in this particular camera has an audio out as well, a built-in speaker. So that would be your speaker volume out. Hopefully this video gave you a decent overview of video and audio encoding settings that are offered on our IP cameras. Thank you for watching.